everyone. It's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. I'm glad you're here with me again. Uh, today is Sunday, February the 20th, and I have been busy today. How about you guys? I have been working on my pantry, and that is an area where you put your food. But what I want to do right now is I want to read another chapter from the Hair Pulling Bear Dog by Lee Roddy. It's the DJ Dylan series. And if you remember yesterday, it ended very sad. And I'm not sure. We'll have to just listen because Zero has been protecting DJ. And then the bear came back with blood on his mouth. So let's find out what we will today. So we're on chapter nine, Memorial for a Hero. When darkness came, DJ was hoarse from calling for the little dog. The boy's eyes felt swollen. He was sick and hurt inside. The sow had been waiting for him at dusk. He wasn't sure if she was still out there or not. He huddled on top of the boulder, huddled, you know, like that. Cold and miserable, aching for zero and wondering what had happened to Kathy. Suddenly, the boy sat straight up, straining to hear. In a moment, it came again, DJ! Paul Stegg. There was no mistaking that giant's rumbling voice. The boy cupped his hands about his mouth and yelled, over here, over here. The lay preacher, Kathy, and several armed men with flashlights soon arrived. The mother bear had gone. Paul helped DJ down. They treated his cuts and scratches, covered him with a leather jacket while searching for the little boy, the little dog's body. Kathy explained she'd taken a wrong turn. That's why she was so long getting back. DJ told her it was okay. He watched his searching flashlight stopped where he had pointed out the last time that he'd seen Zero. Someone called through the night. We found where it happened, but the body's not here. Most likely crawled off to die somewhere. DJ felt a surge of hope. Then he realized the truth. A coyote or other animal had carried off his little dog's body. Aloud, DJ said, I'm coming back to hunt for him in the daylight. Paul Stagg's rumbling voice answered, I'll come with you, DJ. Now, let's get you home. I think I'm a little crooked here. There we go. DJ slept until almost noon. He was awakened by his father, the newspaper editor from the weekly at the county seat is here. He wants to take your picture and talk to you. DJ slid into his pants and came into the living room. The boy had never been interviewed by a newspaper reporter. That's when a reporter is going to ask you questions. He answered questions about how it happened ending with the dog's last yelp. By then, he was trying hard not to let the tears come. The reporter stopped writing. You're quite a hero, DJ, Dylan, and so is, was, your little dog. What'd you say his name was? Zero? DJ hesitated, then said fiercely, I hate that name. Don't call him that. Grandpa tapped his shillelagh on the pine floor. Mr. Newspaper Man, you didn't hear the straight of the name. 
The dog's name was Hero. Now that's not really what Grandpa named it, but that's his new name. When the reporter had gone, DJ looked across the table at his father. His sore leg was sticking out straight on the bench. Dad, I'm going after that outlaw bear. I can't let you do that. On the way home last night, Paul told me he'd go with me. But he's only got a week. Then he's got to go somewhere else to preach for a while. You mean he's moving away? His whole family? Guess so. But Kathy doesn't want to go. She said she's tired of moving and hopes they could stay here until she's through with high school at least. Her father said he'd like to, but he's got to go where the gospel's not being preached. And that means Sheet Iron Mountain next. That's the name of the town. Dad snapped. Then we'd be without a preacher at Stony Ridge. DJ blinked. See me blinking? Had his father said we? Dad lowers his eyes. DJ, when they brought word yesterday what had happened and where you were, I thought maybe I was afraid. Well, I... Dad's trail voice trailed off into silence. DJ frowned, unsure of what his father was trying to say. Finally, his dad spoke again very softly. Son, if you want to go to church Sunday, well, um, that is, I'd go with you. DJ stared. Dad wouldn't even go to church with Mom when she was alive. DJ asked, Grandpa too? It was his idea. That Sunday morning, as DJ, Dad, and Grandpa were driving down the short main street of Stony, Stony Ridge, the boy saw a familiar black pickup parked against the high curb. Dad recognized it at the same time. He hit the brake pedal. I owe that Abbas something, he cried. Dad cut sharply to park behind the black pickup. Grandpa said softly, not today, Sam, not today. Dad hesitated. The Abbas walked out of the town's only mercantile store. Now mercantile, that's an old name for a general store, a store that had food, had medicine, it had clothes, it had just about everything you could need. Tools, guns, everything. DJ saw the professional bear hunter and his son look at the Dillons a moment. Nails started to sneer, but his father sharply nudged him in the ribs. Mm. Mr. Abbas nodded ever so slightly at the Dillons. Mm -hmm. Grandpa said softly, Well, would you look at that? DJ, they must have read about what you've done in the newspaper. Grandpa nodded back. In another second, Dad did the same. So did DJ. Dad let out the clutch. It's nice, he said. But that won't stop them from trying to beat you and Paul to that outlaw bear. We'll beat him, DJ said firmly. Those Abbas been chasing that bear for weeks without any luck. Now it's our turn. Grandpa shook his head. You won't have much time either way. The Abbas will either beat you to the bear or the preacher will move away and you won't be able to hunt that bear without the preacher. I'm gonna move this down just a little bit more. There. Um, we'll beat the Abbas, DJ repeated as dad turned into the church parking lot, and we're gonna do it 
with a trap. Before his father could protest too much, people swarmed over to them and started congratulating DJ, and everyone talked at once. DJ had never seen the little church so full. Maybe it was because Paul Stagg had visited the Dillons' home on Wednesday and learned they were coming to church. There had been just time for a sidebar in the local newspaper alongside the story about the rescue. Usually, DJ would have been so proud he could have burst. But today, today he was sad because of losing his little dog. After the opening prayer and hymn, hymn is a song, Paul Stagg stood to make the announcement and then introduced visitors. We have some very distinguished people with us today, as I'm sure you all noticed. Since you've all read the papers or talked to my daughter about what happened, I'll just skip that and I'll introduce everybody. First, the grandfather and father of our local hero, Caleb and Sam Dillon, please stand so everyone can see you. Grandpa and Dad stood quickly and sat right back down. Then Paul Stagg asked DJ to stand. Slowly, he got to his feet. Paul began the applause. It, was, it swept the congregation. They were clapping for DJ. But they did more than clap. All the people stood up, clapping louder and louder. DJ's neck felt hot. He lowered his eyes, but out of the corner he could see Kathy smiling at him. Mrs. Higgins looked as though she was about to burst with pride. Even little Priscilla Higgins was standing, applauding her eyes serious. He'd never seen such a look from her before. DJ did the same, feeling his face and neck so hot it seemed his shirt would scorch. The preacher said softly, of course, you folks know that neither my daughter nor DJ Dillon might be here today if it weren't for a little hair pulling bear dog. Now, I'm not an ordained minister and I've had no regular schooling in such things, but I love the Lord and all that he made. That includes dogs. Paul Stagg paused and said, since I'm a hound dog man from way back, it seems to me it would be the right thing to have a moment of silence. You might want to think about what it means to love someone so much that you'd give your life for the one you loved. Jesus did that for us, and that little hair pulling dog did it for DJ and for my daughter. The church was very, very still. DJ fought tears that scalded the back of his eyelids. Grandpa sniffed, and Dad rubbed his forefinger against the corner of his right eye. The lay preacher ended the moment of silence by starting a hymn. The pianist picked up on it, and the people joined in. When it was time for the sermon, Paul Stagg stood and said, Today, I'm going to talk about Joseph in the Old Testament. Since the story covers several chapters in Genesis, I'm going to tell, just tell you briefly just what happened before I get to the point that I want to make. Paul Stagg told the teenage Joseph, teenage Joseph being sold, oh, excuse me, I missed a word. Paul Stagg 
told about the teenage Joseph being sold into slavery by his brothers. Joseph was falsely accused of a crime and put in prison for a long time. When he was finally released or let go, he became the second most important man in all of Egypt, next only to the pharaoh or the king of that country. Eventually, when food was scarce, there wasn't enough food, in Joseph's native land where his brothers came down to Egypt, where there was food which Joseph had saved for the people. The brothers didn't even recognize Joseph because it had been a long time since they'd seen him and he wasn't a teenager anymore. But by and by they were told who he was. They were afraid that Joseph would hurt him, hurt them because they had sold him into slavery. Now, the big, pe big lay preacher said in a voice that shook the little church rafters, notice what Joseph says in Genesis 50, verse 20. Joseph says to his brothers, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result. Paul Stagg closed the Bible in his pulpit and walked around to the side of it. Here's the point, folks. You can't always help what happens to you. You can't help where you were born or maybe the place you live or the conditions, but you can control your reaction. You can feel and act towards those conditions. That's called your attitude. You have a choice about that. You should keep a good one, good attitude, because things aren't always what they seem. DJ couldn't explain it, but instantly he knew some things as surely as if someone had told him. Grandpa was cranky and always arguing with dad because the old man hurt. He hurt like the outlaw bear that had been had turned mean. Dad hurt because his wife had died and he had a young son to raise alone. Dad hurt because his leg was injured and he couldn't work and the bills were piling up. Yet none of that seemed that way only a second ago. And Zero, Hero, had run away from the first bear to fight. Yet the little dog wasn't really a coward. He loved DJ enough that the little hair puller had challenged that mad mother bear. The dog had saved both Kathy's and DJ's lives at the cost of his own life. It hadn't seemed that he was brave enough to do that. Yet DJ didn't understand some things. How could anything come good out of his mother dying or his father and grandfather arguing or the little dog getting killed? The boy heard the lay preacher's words again. The scriptures tell us that man looks on the outside, but God looks on the inside, on the heart. Man looks at all of his problems. He looks at his surroundings, the things around him, and he loses and his losses and his pains, and he feels sorry for himself. But God looks on things that are going to be because he knows what's down the road for us. He knows we've got to go through those things. We don't like just to get ready for what's coming ahead. And someday, like Joseph, we can look back and say, it wasn't people or circumstances that sent me here. It was God.
DJ stole a glance at his father. He looked at him and grandfather. Their eyes were lowered. The boy wondered what they were thinking. The Big lay preacher began to wind up his sermon. That means to end it. He's getting close to ending. But sometimes we need help to deal with things. We need help to change from the inside so we can live like Joseph. If you like the Lord, if you'd like the Lord to help you, no matter what your problem, come on down here in the front of this church and let's get it done. DJ closed his eyes. He ached for the little hair puller. He'd rather have him back alive than any collie dog. DJ thought about going to the front of the church. What would dad and grandpa say? What would the kids at school say? Especially what would Nell's Abbas say? Grandpa whispered, DJ, I'm a going to walk down there. You want to come with me? DJ hesitated. In all of his life, he never expected his grandfather to do anything like that. What had happened to him? Why had he and dad even come to church? Grandpa whispered, Sam, you want to come too? Dad shook his head. Not this time, but you and DJ go ahead if you want. The congregation was singing the last verse. Grandpa stood up. You coming, DJ? Wow, that was a surprise. Grandpa is going up to pray because he has things he needs help with, just like we do. Sometimes we have things we need help with. Maybe we're sick, or we know somebody that's sick, or we're lonely, or maybe we lost something. That happens to me. I lose things. Well, that's the end of chapter nine. So tomorrow's chapter is going to be Race to Capture the Outlaw Bear. Oh boy, I hope they can do it. And I hope that they're very careful. So I just want to remind you, I love you. I'm so glad you're listening to the stories with me. I really enjoy them. I hope you do. And I will be reading chapter, oops, I forgot. I think it's 11. Let me see. Nope. Chapter 10 tomorrow. I already told you the title, but I'll say it again. Race to Capture the Outlaw Bear. So we'll read this. We're getting, we're over halfway through this book. Can you see? I've read this much and there's just this much left. But don't worry. When this book's over, there's going to be another one still about DJ. All right. Good night. God bless you guys. Well, unless it's in the daytime for you, then have a great day. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.